Hello and welcome to the Garden of the Black Roses. This is fan fiction. So this is the next chapter of my Yokai Tema Hope uh, fan fiction. Um, yeah, I think these chapters will probably finish off all of the koi um, diamond dots. So depending on how long it takes me to do the Celtic wolf guide I might start the next Yokai Tamara ones with a different diamond dot piece we'll see how I go but at this point in time while I'm recording this I have finished the koi I finished it I've got recordings of me finishing it um, But, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, um, put them to voice yet. Because I had to record, voice record stuff. Anyway, so, chapter two. Ember stood by the tree, watching Sean and Shara exchanging vows. Her heart hurt, but was happy seeing the bright smile on Sean's face. She knew she had made the right decision because of how he was smiling so brightly. Her thoughts slowly drifted to Kire. Ever since her conversation with him, he had been sending her random gifts on her phone. Eternal true loves, carousels, high fives. She could have sworn that she had seen all the different types by now. She felt good about Saturday and looked forward to it. Looking back at the congregation witnessing their wedding, she spotted Levi. He didn't look like he had spotted her yet. She twitched her ears, feeling conflicted about wanting to be with Kire, but feeling so comfortable talking to Levi about deeper things. Reaching up, she tugged her left ear hard. She didn't like feeling conflicted. She was sure that she was making the best choice. Why are you wearing an expression on an occasion like this? Kire thrust a plate of sweets under her nose. Be happy for them. He waited until she took the plate before putting his hand on her head to mess up her hair. Enjoy the moment. Ember sighed and nodded looking up and back to where Sean and Shara stood. How did you spot me? Not many know I like this spot. I guess. Kire replied in an enigmatic enig enig tone. You're overthinking things. I hope that's all that is. I hope that's all it is. Time moved fast for Ember. She sighed. Saturday was tomorrow. Picking up her phone, she flicked through her contacts until she found Kire's number. Her fingers flew. She was excited for tomorrow and wanted to arrange with him the time so she could send the invites out. Her tails flicked happily as she spoke to him on the phone. Yeah, about that. His tone changed from flirty and playful to serious. I don't think I'm right for you. We can't get married. Ember froze. Her hand shook and she almost dropped her phone. So you don't want me? I'm not good enough to be married to you? That's not it. Ember was already in tears. Her head and heart raced with memories from her past. I hear you loud and clear, Kire. She hung up on him and threw her phone across the room. She couldn't take it anymore. Her memories of her first spouse, Assassin, plagued her mind. She knew with how she ended the call, Kire would likely come to her directly to talk to her. So she did the only thing she could think of doing. She ran. 
She ran down the stairs and into the stables where her mount, Tsuki, was waiting for her. Hopping onto the magical floating moon, she took off into Sia City to her favourite hiding spot. It was the only tree by the river. It was an old tree by the river. She loved watching the red petals float lazily from the tree, only to drift away. She took, she got off Tsuki and asked it to stay. Looking around, she made sure that no one saw her before she climbed up into the tree to hide amongst the leaves so she could cry in peace. She didn't want anyone to see her like this. Kraken paced his bedroom worriedly. No one had seen or heard from Ember since the day before. He knew she wasn't in her room because he had pounded on the door for ages and threatened to enter, only to finally do so and find it was empty. The only means of contact with her, her phone, laid on the floor against the wall. Taking a deep breath, he sighed. Something must have happened. It wasn't normal for Ember to disappear for long periods of time without someone knowing. Picking up her phone again, he opened it and sought out two numbers. He knew she was deeply involved with both Tengu to varying degrees, so if anyone knew where she was, it would be them. He quickly called Kire first. The response was surprising. And but look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you, I... Stop, Kire. I'm not Ember. Kraken's voice was quick and sharp. He didn't like what he was hearing from Kire. I'm calling because she's missing. No one has seen or heard her, f heard from her since yesterday morning. I was hoping you might know. She's missing. Hira's voice was unreadable. It's my fault. She asked me yesterday what time we should have our wedding, because we had decided to do it today, but I had changed my mind. When I told her, she became upset and hung up on me. So that's why you were here yesterday, Kraken mused, partially to himself. Not to see how we were travelling with HIVN's attacks on us. But to see if you could catch Ember to talk to her. He had thought it was odd yesterday since Ember would often update Kire and vice versa if something had happened that could affect both guilds. There was never a need for Kire to visit personally. Yeah. Kire's voice sounded somber. Let me know how you go. She's a really good friend. I don't want to lose her. I should have told her much sooner when I had changed that I had changed my mind. I His voice changed to almost playful. I found someone who I've fallen deeply for. I should have told Ember sooner. That would have been a good idea given her history. Kraken sighed. Thanks, Kire. I'm going to give Levi a call. Maybe he might know where she is. No problem. Sorry for causing the trouble. The call ended... When the call ended, Kraken got up and left his room. He needed Ohime's support through this. Not many knew about Ember's past and he wasn't sure if he could carry the burden of trying to find her alone after finding this out. Ember would have ran and hid herself away, just like she did the first time. Reaching the dynamo's floor, he walked up to Ohime's door and knocked on it lightly. He could hear giggles and laughter from inside before Ohime opened the door. She wasn't expecting her spouse to come see her, and was surprised at the visit. 
We have a situation, and I need your help, Kraken said with a sigh. He looked in the room and added, All of your help. Ohime guided him inside and closed the door. Can't Ember help you? That's part of the problem. Ember is missing. He quickly, he quickly relayed what he found out from Kire to them, and what he suspected Ember had done in response. He held up her phone and added, We have no means to contact her, so wherever she is, she will be very upset and very weak by now since it's getting dark. Unless she's eaten something, it's been almost two days since she's run away. No! Shirahima said, hands going to her mouth. Aside from Kraken, she had lived with Ember and supported her through her past. She knew more than anyone what was going through Ember's mind right now. That... Ellie looked angry. How could he do this to her? She was so happy knowing she was going to get married to him. I saw them, Shara whispered. She was still uncertain about being allowed to speak up as she was new. Kire and her at my wedding. They looked so comfortable with each other. I never suspected he would do this to her. How can we help? Hebe asked him. If we can't contact her to find out where she is, how can we help her? I'm hoping she hasn't left CS City, Kraken replied, flicking through her phone to find Levi's, Levi's number. I want you girls to start the search. Don't let the rest of the guild know just yet. I'm going to give Levi a call to see if he can help. He has an uncanny ability to get through to her when she's like this. Then Mac and I will go, will also join the search. Let's hope he doesn't hurt her just like Kire did. Ellie's voice was dark. Or his manhood is gone. The girls nodded and headed out, leaving Kraken to shiver at the thought of being castrated. May the gods help you, Levi, <laughs> Kraken said before making the call. He paused in his flicking at another name. Sigurd. Kraken sighed. He, he resolved to call both Tengu. He had his reservations about Ember's friendship with Levi. Levi flew over Sea City on his peacock mount. His thoughts reeling over what he heard from Kraken. Below he could see the girls, Kraken and Mac, searching for her on foot. He patted the proud bird before looking around. There was always, there had to be something, anything. Each moon mount he saw, every Gemini pet he found, he investigated to find out who their owners were. It wasn't until he happened across an unattended moon mount near an old tree. Directing his peacock to land, he scanned the area. Hopping down, he gave the bird another pat and a request to stay before he moved closer to the seemingly abandoned moon. He could hear soft crying nearby, but he couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from. Coming closer to the tree, he barely managed to place his hand on the tree before he was tackled by something. No closer! No closer! Levi stared in surprise at the Gemini pet attempting to hold him down. The dark female was the one who spoke. My master wants no one closer. We fight, we fight! The light male one added. We won't let you go closer. Look at me, Levi said softly to the Gemini, startling it. You know me. You've seen your master talk to me before, when she was sad. Won't you let me go closer? The Gemini tilted their heads, thinking. They turned to each other, while sitting on his stomach. 
Levi waited, knowing that the cooperation from the Gemini would be easier than having the, to keep them at bay. Master knows Master's sad, the Dark One said to the Light. We know Master needs friend, but Master wants no one. Master hurt, Master remembering, the Light One replied. Friend may upset further, doesn't know. The Dark One looked at Levi before looking back at the Light One. Can help, can help, he wants Master. The Light also looked at him before looking back at the Dark One. Then we allow? We allow? Master will be angry. The Dark One nodded again. But Master needs. Master needs. He can help her. The Gemini got off Levi and floated to the side. We wait, we wait. If you hurt more, we attack. I understand, Levi said, brushing himself off. I'll try my best not to hurt her more. He patted their heads and went to climb the tree. What he saw before him upset him greatly. Ember laid curled hidden within the leaves and branches, her tail wrapped around her body her face red and wet from crying. Even now, she was asleep, but still crying and softly talking to herself. A repetitive, negative mantra. Worthless, discarded, unwanted. She was covered in fallen leaves, a testament to how long she had been hiding there. Levi took out his phone and sent a quick message to Kraken to let him know he found her. He received a thumbs up and a take care of her back. Looking up again, he slowly approached her along the branch. Ember awoke to the feeling of the branch moving. She looked through the gap in her tails and cried out, Leave me alone, Levi. Fresh tears flooded down her face. She didn't want to be seen like this least of all by him. I'm not going anywhere, Ember. He perched himself on the branch within arm's length of her. I'm not leaving. Her tails tightened around her even more, blocking his sight of her face. Silence did spread between them. Hesitantly, he, stro he gently stroked one of her tails letting her know he was still there, waiting. It was a while before Ember said anything. I guess you know what happened. Her voice was muffled and watery, but Levi could hear it just fine. It happened again. No one finds me worthy of the effort. It must not be spouse material. I'm just used and thrown away. Levi waited, unsure how to respond to her. He wanted her to keep talking. If she spoke, she might unwind herself so he could so she could talk to him better. Ember took his silence the wrong way. You think that way too? In one swift movement, she unwound herself and leapt free from the tree. Levi's hand gripped air as she vanished along with her moon and pets. He hit his fist hard against the tree. Damn it! Sigurd stood scratching his head. Ember is so much more trouble than she's worth sometimes, he thought, with a sigh. He had been looking in the bamboo forest for her, but he really wasn't sure why Kraken had called him. His eyes caught a little yellow whirlwind fly past him and almost topple him over. Reaching out, he grabbed a hold of her arm 
and pulled her close to him. Ember struggled, trying to fight against him. She couldn't see who had a hold of her, but she wanted to hide again. Ember! Sigurd growled softly in her ear. Again? Why is it always me who finds you? What set you off this time? I thought Kire and you were getting together soon. His voice her, broke. His voice broke her from her hold of the. His voice broke her from the hold her past had on her. She re she relaxed, resting back in his arms. Tears still silently falling. Kire doesn't want me. I saw Levi as well not too long ago. He doesn't want me either. Sigurd. A little surprised, replied softly. Kire should have said something sooner. He's fallen in love with Chocolate. He saw a wry smile form on Ember's face. They've been getting closer. They've been getting close even before the guilds got out, got on the bandwagon of getting you two together. No, I know. Ember said softly. He told me a while back he had his eye on someone. That's why I said only if he w was okay with it. I'm glad he finally made his move. As for Levi, Sigurd tilted his head. He's a mystery to me. He tickled her until she was trying to wriggle away from him. He liked teasing her and making her smile. She was easier to handle when she was happy. He knew his next question was going to be a heavy one. So what sparked this episode? His voice was soft. He was well aware Amber had a traumatic history, which flavoured a lot of her normal behaviour, but he didn't know the details. Part of him didn't want to know, but he also knew talking about it helped her to let go and get better. I was remembering my first spouse, Assassin. He was so charming and sweet. He would always shower me with gifts. But all he wanted was a convenient play toy. Always wanted sex. Nothing more. He didn't want to start a family. Whenever I pushed the topic, he would yell at me. Tell me I will Tell... Tell me that I'm not smart enough to look after a baby. That a baby with me would be just as worthless as me. I felt trapped. I couldn't see a way out. One day, he gave me his ring and said he was going to... His real spouse overseas. He couldn't handle having to train me anymore because I was a lost cause. Sigurd paused and tightened his hug. He didn't realise that she had been through all of that before. He didn't realise that she had been through all of that before he met her. He knew it was just scratching the surface. Perhaps he wasn't worthy of being with you. But then what about Sean? I had asked him. I didn't see it before why he never agreed, but I understand now. He already has a child, Haiti, with, Sar with Shara. Now that she's back in the country, they are back together and they've already been blessed with another baby. Ember sounded sad, but accepting. They stood in silence for a bit before Sigurd let her go, let go of her. I'm here if you ever need to talk, Ember. Try not to run away again. Ember gave him a small smile. All right, Sieg, I'll try. And that's it. That was chapter two. 
as always make sure to like it comment and subscribe for more content um yeah there's only two more chapters of this one and then i'll see how i go we'll see what happens <clears throat> and as always let your imagination run wild bye for now